All right. Well, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier on the show, a few of a, a few of you out there uh, berated me and Robert for not doing a free NAS application because we suggested all these NAS solutions to a viewer last show. What you don't like thousand dollar NAS devices? Come on. Well, no, the, I, please. Well, the thing, the advantage of using one of those NASs, uh, NAS devices, is that first of all, they're they're a little more robust in that they've kind of been designed for that explicit purpose. They're a lot more compact. Generally, they're less intrusive. I mean, you can reuse an old PC if you don't mind having a PC, you know, sitting in a corner with its power uh, being plugged into the wall and sucking all that juice just to run a couple yeah, of network drives. Strip it down to just its essentials, and you know, and optimize it. And it's some, you know, yeah. or you can you make know, it fairly efficient. You can. You can make it efficient wow. if you. Well, you want to first get this great application that's called FreeNAS. And uh, let me pull up the website here, freenas.org. Now, like every other open source uh, application, there are some uh, hooks uh, that you need to be aware of. Mainly, you need hardware that's going to be supported. So generally, with, as with uh, Linux, the older the hardware, the more support it's probably going to be. And I want to make sure, so I don't get any flame wars going, FreeNAS is BSD based, uh, so it is not Linux. It's Unix. I know it's it's a small thing, but I just call it all Nix. Nix. Nix is good. Asterisk and, Nix. So you download the disk, you install it, and very important thing when you install it, uh, which you, I'm sure I'll catch. You want to make mind. sure that you do the embedded <laughs> and not full install. Uh, I did the full install and it wasn't working for me. I was like, why the heck is it not working? It's like, oh, I need to do an embedded install. Why? When, uh, is there an easy reason for that? Uh, well, the full install just copies the whole thing, and it expects you to install it on something else. Oh, okay. Which, uh, once it's installed on the hard drive or flash drive, any drive that is seen as a letter drive uh, within your uh, machine can be used as storage. So if you have flash storage that can accommodate you know, 8 gigs and you want an 8 gig NAS, uh, you can do that. Uh, but essentially, when you're done, this is a screen that you get. It's very unflashy, as you can see. It says dismounted. You... Ask it to select an IP, and I already did. LAN IP address is given on my local networks with a 2.254, uh, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Once this is running, the system uh, is up and running. I'm going to switch over here, so it's going to probably blind the camera uh, in a minute. So let me punch back. Let me punch back. So that was the boot screen? That, that is a server screen. Oh, okay. And, uh, come on. Oh, there we go. Magical. TV's a little uh, hiccupy today. And what now you, this what, is the web-based interface. This is the web interface. The browser. And the beauty of this is it's just like smooth. Walk. Everything you need to configure, you do through a web browser. You don't need to set any client applications. Nice. You point it at the IP. You punch in your password. Uh, you log in in your password, which is, by the way, is admin. Free NAS is default. Always change it when you're done. And as you can see, I already mounted two drives. The password is password. Yes, FreeNAS and FreeNAS2. So I was very creative in selecting names for these devices. And now once you have that, you can go through... They called it ReadyNAS. <laughs> Why did I call it ReadyNAS? You know, that's, oh, I won't give you that. Uh, give, you're going to give me so much flack for that. I'm sorry. Me? Nah. I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> uh, the thing that kind of got me initially, and I want to point this out as a tip, if we go here to the right where the mouse cursor is, when you first want to uh, mount drives uh, in, uh, into the application... You won't see anything except this little plus thing. And it's like, how do you do it? There's no button or anything. You just have to click this plus to add, and you add your new drive. You select all the attributes that you want for it. Ooh. So as long as you stick it with the Unix uh, formatting uh, uh, file system, you should be okay with the UFS. See, look at that. Advanced power management features, acoustical level management, if the drive supports that. So, yep. so you could tweak this to make those drives uh, as quiet and, and efficient power efficient as well and so. if you use something like a shuttle box and you're not running it hard uh, full time it should be all right in terms of uh, noise as well as heat generation or if you're using a lower a lower wattage yeah. power supply in the system trying just to minimize everything and, and keep it as quiet as possible too if you want to do raid it does support software raid so you can nice. do that however that will take a cpu hit so you need a you want a, a semi decent uh, cpu in order to get this going as well as encryption if you're kind of concerned about people poking the man now, looking at my stuff looking at your stuff or grandma and finally in the uh, left here we have services on the tab right there let me just scroll up so the camera doesn't have to scroll down CT, uh, CI, CIFS that is essentially what you're going to use for Samba or SMB networks okay. Windows network shares you use that FTP uh, secure uh, shares NFS a AFP for Apple RCT Unison uh, 
is that uni- yeah, Unison mm-hmm. uh, Universal P and P? If you have yes. any media boxes My in your home, set top boxes. You set that up. You can plug your media and you can start streaming content off your NAS device. My and security what- conscious friends claim there are risks involved with UPnP, but I find in my local network at home it makes my life so much easier it's because a, it does yeah. the dynamic port stuff for you. You don't yeah. have to think about ports. As That's- long as you do that and you limit your Wi-Fi access to Mac as well as password. Well, it's uh, wide open. Oh. Yeah, well. That's you. Um, you. You should be all right. And, you know, once you get it going, once you have the SMB sharing, it just shows up like a network drive, as you can see right here. Ready and ask one and then ready and ask two because I was so creative and was thinking about something else when I named these. Free NAS. Yeah. Did I say free NAS? Why did you just call it ready? Oh, you know why? Because this is the folder name, not the drive name. Yep. So there okay. I have a Dan Rather clip uh, in here. And, you know, once you get it going, you can start sharing. The only thing you want to be careful of is you're going to be limited by your network interface. So if you have a 10-100, you're going to be limited by that. If you have a gigabit, you're probably going to be limited to a little over... Maybe that's, that's nice. Yeah, gigabit, gigabit moving hard drive or moving yeah. files around on a network is... If, if the yeah. whole network is gigabit... The, there, are net, there are network... Uh, costs uh, incurred with using IP-based uh, transfers, so be aware of that. If you have a gigabit network, you're not going to get a gigabit, believe me. I've tried. No, no, but you get at least half that. So Yeah, you get at least half, so expect that. If you're moving huge files frequently yeah. on your network, it's probably worth your time to go find yourself a new router that supports gigabit or switch or whatever you're using. Just invest in... Because most, most computers nowadays actually support... Uh, not only 100 megabit, of course, but but gigabit Ethernet speeds as well. It just seems to be the default everyone's using. At least, at least all the latest new systems I've seen recently. Yeah. Yeah. So, great way to reuse old hardware, especially if it's small, compact, and power-efficient hardware. You know, throwing a couple of spare drives in it, it's a great way to reuse old hardware. Again, hold the hardware. I hate repeating myself. But an awesome, awesome, awesome learning experience to kind of figure out how all this stuff works. Once you get it going, it's actually a lot more flexible than most people realize. There's so many settings, so many tweaks you can do with it, especially with the FTP. You can do a secure FTP into it. Um, it's a great way to kind of set up a home server, uh, content release storage server. Sweet. All 